In the last video, we downloaded some tick data from CTrader, and then we used Python to analyze the data to find the best time to enter trades when spreads are lowest on average. In this video, we'll be writing two functions to clean up our code a bit, and then I'll be showing you how to create three different types of parameters, as well as three of the best ways to use these parameters. So let's dive straight in. This is where we left off in the last video, and you can see that the code keeps getting longer as we add more things to it. So we're going to wrap up some of the code into functions to make it cleaner and easier to read. First, let's create a function called open, which is what we're going to use when we want to open a new trade. This function will take two parameters, a label of type string and a trade direction of type trade type. Then we're just going to copy and paste the lines of code related to opening a trade, which is the lines to calculate the trade amount, as well as these execute market order lines. Then we just need to replace this trade type dot by with the trade direction. And this SSL long with the label. Now we can replace these two lines of code with open SSL long with trade direction dot by. Now if we build it and run the backtest, you'll find that you'll get the same result as before. But our code is just a little bit more organized now. Let's go ahead and create the close function now, which also takes the label and trade direction as inputs. We want this function to close any trades with the given label and trade direction. And we can do this by looping through the positions using for each. Variable position in positions dot find all. with the label and symbol name and trade direction given. And then close positions when it finds a match. Now we can replace these lines with close SSL long with trade type dot by. And close SSL short with trade type dot sell. Now we can delete all of these lines because the logic is wrapped up into our new functions. And you can see that the code is much cleaner now. Let's build it to make sure it works. Looks like I made a small typo down here, but you'll find that it gives you the same result when you run the backtest. Okay, cool. Now let's talk about parameters. The first parameter we're going to create is the risk per trade parameter. We're just going to give it a label of risk percent and a default value of 2%. We can leave the parameter type as double, which just means a number with decimals, and we'll give it a variable name of risk PCT for risk percent. Now, after we build the bot, you'll see the new parameter in the parameters box with the label and default value that we gave it. And this is where we can easily change the value of the parameter. But it doesn't work because we haven't actually used the parameter in our code yet. All we need to do now is go over to the open function and replace the hard-coded 2% with the name of the parameter. And now when we run the backtest again, you'll see it's taking 1% per trade. So now we can use this to easily change the amount of risk for this bot. Let's go ahead now and create two more parameters for the SSL indicator. Just copy and paste these two lines and change the label to SSL period. 
You can set the default value to whatever you want, but we'll just use 22 and we'll change the variable type to int, which is a whole number. And we'll give it a name of SSL period. And now we can replace this hard coded number with our new parameter. The last one we're going to create is the SSL moving average type. So we'll give it the label SSL MA type, default value of moving average dot triangular. Put moving average type as the variable type. And we'll give it a name of SSL MA type. And now we can use this when loading up the SSL indicator. Once we build it, you'll see the new parameters appear in the box. And now we can easily change the period or the moving average type of the indicator. So this allows us to rapidly test out different parameters without having to mess around with the code. Another good thing about using parameters is that it allows us to use different parameters for different currencies. So say we wanted to run another instance of this SSL bot on Bitcoin, and we can use a different set of parameters for that instance. So for example, we can have an instance running on Bitcoin with the SSL period of 15 and another instance of the pound Swissy with the SSL period of 22, both running at the same time. The last and probably the most powerful thing about parameters is that it allows us to use the optimization engine in CTrader. I'll be covering that in a future video, but here's a quick preview of how it works. If you go to the optimization tab and click on CBOT parameters, here we can select the parameters that we want to test. For example, we can set it to test every SSL period between 10 and 30. And what it will do is run 20 different backtests with the different parameters and give you the results of each one. This is a super powerful tool and will save you a heap of time, but it could also easily lead to overfitting your strategy. And I'll be talking about some things you can do to reduce the overfitting in a future video. But for now, have a go at adding some parameters to the MACD bot from episode 7. And leave a comment below if you have any questions.